We're now ready to learn the correct way to calculate variability in our data set. Last time we collected some data from six dogs asking them how many toys each dog owned. We added up those scores, divided by n, and found an average of five. And then to calculate the variability, we subtracted five from each raw score and added up those deviation scores so that we could divide by n. However, when we did that, we discovered a problem with the mean average deviation being that it always equals zero. It's not something we can use for math. Instead, we are going to take a different approach. We need to get rid of those negative deviation scores, the ones that are balancing out the positive deviation scores. How could we make the negative scores positive? One approach would be to use absolute values, but that makes the math and the algebra difficult later on. So instead, we are going to take advantage of the fact that when you square a value, that value is always positive. We are going to square each deviation score. Deviation scores are also called error scores. When we add up the squared deviations, we have a sum of squares. A sum of squares. Add up the squared deviations. This sum of squares is also sometimes called the sum of squared errors. Two terms for exactly the same thing. Let's look at this information in a table. In the first column, we have the raw scores from our data. In the second column, the mean. And in the third column, we have subtracted the mean from each raw score, giving us a deviation score, some of which are positive, others of which are negative. The negative scores balance out the positive scores, giving us a total deviation of zero. However, by squaring those deviations, the numbers become positive. Three squared is nine, two squared is 14, negative four squared is 16. To get the sum of squares, all we need to do is add up the squared deviations. The total of the numbers in that column is 38. And now we are ready to create an average. Add up the scores and divide by n. Let's add up our squared deviations, sum of squares, and divide by the total number of scores. And this is called the variance of the distribution. With variance, we divide the sum of squares by the total number of scores. 38 divided by 6 is 6.33. The variance now becomes a very useful measure for measuring the variability in our data. But there's one problem with the variance, and that is it's hard to interpret. The variance of 6.33 would be interpreted as these dogs own an average of five toys with a variance of 6.33 squared dog toys. If we were measuring something about ages, the variance would be squared years. That's really difficult to interpret. What do you think the solution is? How can we get away from these squared units into the original units of our data set? It's as simple as taking the square root of the variance, and that is called the standard deviation. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. The advantage of a standard deviation is that it is reported in the original scale the same as the mean. So now we can say these dogs own an average of five dog toys with a standard deviation of 2.5 dog toys. And that is how we mathematically calculate the variability within our data set.